Okay, so you should have completed page six for homework last night. Your answers were posted online. You should have been able to check. So yesterday we went from standard or rectangular form, which is what you're always accustomed to, and we converted to trig or polar form by finding R and theta. So today we're going to go the other direction. So today we're going to start from trig form and we're going to convert back to standard form. Okay, so we are going to use that our a is r cosine of theta and b is r sine of theta, just like before. And we're going to substitute it in with a plus bi. And remember, we also we ended up with r cosine theta plus i times r sine theta. And then remember, we wrote this most often as r cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so that's a reminder from yesterday. So now we are going to go the other direction. So we're starting in R cosine theta plus I sine theta, and we want to change that to standard form. So first thing we need to know, we need to know R, we need to know A, and we need to know B. Okay, so in this particular case, remember this is R, and then we have cosine theta plus I sine theta. So in this particular case, R is going to be 3, okay? Now, from our last slide, remember that A is R cosine of theta and B is R sine of theta. So if A is R cosine theta, we're going to substitute in accordingly. So R is 3 and then cosine and then our theta is 315 degrees. Now, we know 3. Here's the catch, cosine of 315. If I don't have a calculator, the only way to find the cosine of 315 degrees is to go to my unit circle. And we need to remember that cosine is your x-coordinate. So you would go to 315 degrees and see that your x-coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. At that point, we would substitute in square root of 2 over 2 and then just multiply. So we're going to get 3 square roots of 2 over 2, and that is our a. Then we're do the same thing with b. So we know that b is our sine theta, okay? So r is 3 and then sine and then theta is still 315 degrees. So we would do our three and then we go to our unit circle and the sine of 315 degrees is the y coordinate at 315, which is negative square root of two over two. And then we're gonna multiply. So we're gonna have negative three root two over two, okay? So now I can substitute in and say, all right, well now I know that I'm converting to a plus bi, and guess what? I know a and I know b. So I know a is three root two over two, and then b is negative, so minus three root two over two i. And we just converted from trig form to standard form, okay? Now, all of this is really good, and it ties it all together. Everything we just did, oops, okay? Everything we just did is great. But some of you may be picking up on another option. And what you might see here is we have this. This is trig form. Now, what if we just start by substituting and we just discovered that the cosine of 315 is the x coordinate at 315 degrees, which is square root of 2 over 2, plus and then we saw that the sine of 315 was negative square root of 2 over 2, and then we have our i. What if we just distribute it? So we have 3 root 2 over 2 minus 3 root 2 over 2 i, and you are in standard form. So what I did the first time is I showed you the y. A is r cosine of theta, and you can substitute it in, and B is R sine of theta, and you can substitute it in, and then you can substitute A and B, so you can do that. But most of the time, for us mathematicians, you're going to eventually do it the second way, where you're just going to substitute in, and then you're going to distribute accordingly. So let's look at another example, okay? So 2 square root of 2 cosine negative pi over 3 plus I sine negative pi over 3. Now we could go through and find R and find A and find B, okay? But the reality is, is we can do the same thing with our distributing. Now, we do need to know what R is, okay? And R is two square roots of two, and our theta 
is negative pi over 3. So when we get to do this, we're going to have z equals, and we will have 2 square roots of 2. Now, got to go to our unit circle. Cosine of negative pi over 3. Guys, that means you're going to rotate clockwise pi over 3. So negative pi over 3 is the same thing on your unit circle as, here, as 5 pi over 3. So negative pi over 3 on a unit circle is sometimes hard to see. So when we go to look at this, okay, we need to remember that 5 pi over 3 lies right here, okay? But that's not what I asked for. I asked for negative pi over 3. That means you're rotating this way. And if you remember from before, this would be negative pi over 6, negative pi over 4, and negative pi over 3. So when we're talking about the sine and cosine, we're using these coordinates at negative pi over 3. So I'm going to substitute in accordingly. So I need first the cosine. I need cosine of negative pi over 3. So I'm going to go to negative pi over 3, and cosine is your x. So I'm going to use 1 half. So I'm going to put 1 half here plus i, copying from here, and now I need the sine of negative pi over 3. So the sine of negative pi over 3 is going to be the y right here at negative square root of 3 over 2. So I'm going to have negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so now we're going to have to clean it up and do some multiplication. So when we multiply our fractions, I'm going to have 2 square roots of 2 over 2 minus, now when you're multiplying radicals, remember you multiply the numbers on the outside, so I have a 2, and the square root of 2 times square root of 3 is square root of 6 over 2. And then the last step is remember if you can reduce anything on the outside of your radicals. So like these 2s and these 2s, and we can, 2 over 2 is 1, so I'm going to have square root of 2. Don't forget your i up here, okay? So then I'm going to have square root of 2 minus square root of 6 i. And y'all, that's my answer. We just converted. Same thing, okay? We're using our unit circle and distributing accordingly. So now, when you're looking at the next example, okay? So 8 cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. We are going to do the exact same thing. Okay, so we're going to come up here, and we're going to do our 8. I'm going to have an 8, and then we're going to go looking, okay? I'd probably write it, doesn't really matter, but I'm going to have an 8, and then I'm going to have cosine of pi over 2. So we're going to go look at our unit circle, and we're going to be working at pi over 2, okay? So the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so I'm going to have 0 plus, and then the sine of pi over 2 is 1, because that's your y. So I'm going to have a 1 for sine. So I'm going to have plus 1i. Don't forget your i. And then you're going to distribute. So we'll have z equals 8 times 0 is 0. So 0 plus 8i. Or you can just say 8i. And that is your complex number. Y'all, think about what this means. This means that theta is pi over 2 and that your distance is 8. Now, wouldn't that make sense if we go to our real and imaginary axis? That's your real axis. This is your imaginary. 8i is right here. That is 8i, okay? Does it have an angle of pi over 2? Absolutely. We rotate it to pi over 2. And then is its absolute value, which is r, the distance from 0, 8? Absolutely. So graphically, our complex number is z equals 8i. So let's look at this one. Same idea. Okay, so if I look at this one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to have z equals 7, and then cosine of 0, so we'll go to our unit circle, and this time we're going to talk about 0. So cosine of 0 happens to be 1, and the sine is 0. So we're going to go cosine of 0, of zero is 1, and then the sine of 0 is 0. Distribute, so I'm going to have 7 plus 0i, or z equals 7. Now think about that graphically. On my real axis, there's my point right there. That is an angle of 0 degrees, and it is 7 units from the origin. So, last one. Typically, if we were in class, I'd have you try it, but I want to go through and work it with you one more time just to be sure we know what we're doing, okay? 
So we're going to go and we're going to say z equals 5. Then cosine of pi over 3. So we have to go to our unit circle. And we got to go to pi over 3. So right here, cosine is 1 half, sine is square root of 3 over 2. And we're going to substitute in. So we're going to have 1 half plus square root of 3 over 2 i. And then remember, if you're dealing with fractions, write it over 1. So we're going to have 5 over 2 plus 5 square roots of 3 over 2 i. And y'all, we just converted every single time from trig form to standard form. So your homework tonight is to do page 7, okay? This is 8 questions, and it's just converting. It gives you practice using the unit circle and converting from trig form to rectangular form.